And we're back, Anthony Fury, in for Jerry Yeager. So in our last block, we were asking, how do you get to the truth of what's happening on the ground in the Israel-Gaza conflict? Well, one way is you can go on the ground, and that's just what a delegation of Canadian MPs did. Etobicoke Centre MP Ted Opitz joining me now in studio. So when did you go? What was it like? Uh, we just went over the last couple of days. I returned uh, last evening, um, and it was... Uh uh, it was eye-opening for sure. Um, Your we, first visit? No, I've, I've been to Israel before. Right. And I've been to Ramallah on the West Bank uh, previously as well uh, on that on that visit. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we uh, there's no better way to uh, to evaluate the situation than to be on the ground yourself and be able to uh, to see with your own eyes what's going on to the best of your ability. It's, it was difficult to get around everywhere, but uh, it's a nation that um, is, is clearly being attacked uh, by rockets uh, quite frequently. We were in Ashkelon where uh, they've been enduring, uh, uh, or uh, sorry, where they've been enduring a rocket attack since 2001, and, and, uh, and some of these towns close to, uh, to Gaza have been enduring that uh, but you know clearly um, we uh, as a government and uh, as a people you know we are absolutely um, uh, horrified at the amount of uh, civilian casualties on both sides we uh, we regret the the loss of uh, a life but you know quite frankly you know Israel has a right to defend itself and from these rocket attacks from these tunnel systems which are absolutely uh, dreadful and uh, this is something that have been built and used uh, for terror purposes only there's no constructive other use for it they've taken hundreds of millions of dollars in aid money and, and turned it into uh, rockets and, and tunnel systems that uh, penetrate Israel and, and are designed for one purpose and that's to emerge and, and create terror kill the Israeli soldiers and as today kidnap uh, an Israeli soldier as they did 90 minutes after they called a 72-hour uh, ceasefire where Hamas should have been looking after the needs of the innocent Palestinian people and providing food, water, uh, shelter, medical aid. Uh, instead, fanatically, they, they went after the Israeli soldiers. So they built the tunnels with aid money, so I presume this is money sent to them by both private people and other governments and, and other so forth, yeah. Canadian taxpayers, sure. perhaps some money there, and that money is to feed kids and hospitals and create schools and well, all exactly. that stuff? Well, uh, exactly. Canada has, has given, uh, in, in total, I've just aggregated about $71 million uh, over the last year, and that, that's for um, democratic uh, purposes. It's for feeding social, uh, social use, million building to the democracy. Folks in Gaza. Uh, yeah, West Bank and Gaza, West Bank, yeah. okay, for all Palestinian people uh, to share and, and promote the democracy. We, we provide money through credible NGOs because we have an obligation to the Canadian taxpayer to make sure that money reaches its targets. Um, but there's a lot of money from around the world coming in and from, from donor states that, uh, that provide these guys uh, uh, the, the funding to be able to build these tunnels and, and to buy rockets uh, to be able to, uh, to fire at the Israeli people and their purposes. Uh, with these rockets to to harm civilians. It's not against military targets that they're firing. They're firing at Israeli civilians. And clearly Hamas is using uh, Palesti innocent Palestinian civilians as human shields because they're putting the rockets underneath schools and mosques and other supposedly safe areas where they're putting people at risk and half the population of uh, Gaza are children and they have no regard uh, for the lives of those kids so when you talk about uh, what's going on there um, you know they, they won't tell you how many uh, Hamas uh, um, terrorist fighters have been killed and I think that's a, that's a significant number in that so we have to watch out what, uh, what is being reported. So most Western politicians in office have come out and denounced Hamas in one way or another Barack Obama, John Kerry, you've got Stephen Harper here, John, um, Thomas Mulcair pr pretty much indicting Hamas maybe saying in slightly different tones, as the Conservative Party says, but saying Hamas, terrorist organization. But you still got the protests on the street. Ezra Levant had the pro-Israel uh, protests, but you still got a lot of the pro-Palestinian uh, protests who come out and they, they deny some of these facts. They say, no, not a terrorist organization. And they also say, your government, no, no, you need to come down harder on Israel and you need to be doing more to stop Palestinian civilians from dying. What do you say to them? Well, I, I say this. There has been nobody that's been a, a stronger 
a uh, friend of Israel, and Stephen Harper and John Baird. You heard Minister Baird's statement just a little while ago. We are absolutely appalled at the development there. But it's not just about supporting Israel. You know, the Palestinian people, the Hamas is a terrorist organization. You know, the, there are innocent Palestinian people that are suffering, and we all recognize that. But they are being effectively held ca uh, captive by these terrorist organizations that uh, that use them as human shields, that deny them uh, the democratic rights and privileges that they should have. Most ordinary people around the world, I don't care who they are, they just want to be able to live in a normal way. They want their kids to go to school. They want the, the opportunity to have jobs and a reasonable income and a decent quality of life. That's all the average person anywhere is really looking for. But Hamas is a fanatical group that is sworn to the destruction of Israel. It's in their charter. You can't negotiate with people from that starting point. And as you could see, they've broken this ceasefire within 90 minutes. They have no uh, care or intention to work or, or look after their people. They are just simply there. They've used that as an opportunity to dig yet another or to, to emerge from a tunnel behind the Israeli position, attack Israeli soldiers with a suicide bomb, and, and capture one of them. As I write in, in my column in tomorrow's papers, I say you only have to look in the charter to see. They actually say all these peace agreements, international sit downs, they're bogus. They're not even interested in that stuff. I want to ask you from your time being on the ground there, do you have any sense why? the folks in Gaza would have elected Hamas to office in 2006? I mean, that just, uh, that one doesn't, I, I don't get that. Uh, I, it's hard to say. You know, it's uh, clearly it was the wrong decision for them, and I think the, the Palestinian Authority will have a, a very significant role to play going forward. Uh, Hamas has, has demonstrated that they are not for the Palestinian people. They are not acting as a responsible group. One, you know, if they were, they would be building the infrastructure and the schools and, and the medical care that people need. They don't care about that. Their, their sole reason in life is to attack Israel and Israelis. And this is, this is, has to be clear to the international community now as to what they're doing. And let me, let me reiterate, they are not a state. Um, Hamas itself is not a legitimate government. It is a terrorist group sworn to the destruction of the Israeli state. And this is something that we have to bear in mind uh, when, we're, when we're dealing with this group. Ted Opitz, thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you.